Scott Brown here, and today's exciting episode, we are in Ponsonby. Okay, so this morning we are going to patch this in here. So this post has been cut flat with the top of the balcony and we're going to cover it up. But in order to do that, we need to take some of this off. So I basically look for any supports and I can see the nails here. So I'm just gonna to cut to one side of those nails, multi that out and then knock the board that way. So it's a bit of a surgical removal, getting rid of the uh, tongue and groove flooring. But there it is. Now we just need to trim this post down to the same level as the joist. So a handy tip when cutting out tongue and groove, tongue and groove to anything, is uh, cut two lines in the center of the board like this and break that centerpiece out. And then that way, when you're pulling away from the tongue and pulling a tongue out of a groove, you don't snap it. And also, use a multi-tool. And one of these little bits here is good for tidying up the corners. That's the feet up there. The thing up there is pretty rotten and it's just missing pieces all together. So I ripped a piece off. This looks like some more tongue groove. Yeah, there's the groove. So I'll take this with me as well. This is a big part of renovating bungalows. You end up matching a lot of old timber. <laughs> We have a match. Can you believe it? It's the third day of summer. The weather is something you can't control, of course. Uh, but what you can control is getting the right boards, and I hope I did. This kind of pine is treated, but it's also primed because they recommend that you have at least a coat of paint on it. But in this case, this is like a sealed balcony and I want it to remain that way. So I'm using epoxy to join the butt ends. Hopefully by doing that, I'll seal both butt ends. And then when you coat it all with paint, you'll never know it was there. It's all protected anyway. It's got a veranda over it, so it should be fine. I 
think it's always good to stagger your joints as well. So I joined them at this joist and that one instead of just joining them at the same joist because then, you know, if things do move and you do see a line, you're not seeing an obvious repair where a post was. That's the way I figure it anyway. And I'm pretty confident this method works because four years ago I put this in and it is literally exactly how I left it. <laughs> 